welcome you to feel we forward motion For those of you who don't know, um, I am acting group manager at the council um, in place of James Jefferson, who normally sits alongside this board. So I'm here today and I'll be chairing the meeting until um, the community board members make their declarations of office and we elect a community board chair and then I'll pass over to the new chair. So um, I'm here as the chief executive's representative, representative until that occurs. So, I think we should kick off and um, invite the community board members to make their declarations of office. So, first up, can I ask Kelsey Lee? If you like. I've been given um, my declaration in both um, te reo and in um, English, so I'm going to do mine in English. Um, but for those who uh, aren't as fluent and would like to know what we're actually declaring. Um, so I, Sean Grenfell McKinley, declare that I faithfully and impartially and according to the best of my skill and judgment execute and perform in the best interests of the Paikakariki community the powers, authorities and duties vested in or imposed upon me as a member of the Paikakareki Community Board by virtue of the Local Government Act 2002, the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act 1987 or any other act.
Part of our meeting. Um, we're now going to move on to quite another formal part, which is explanation of legislation for new elected members in the 2022-2025 Australia. So I'll just run through some of the legislation that you have been given a copy of, to make sure you are aware of them, and the statutory obligations that are required by you. So the key statutory obligations are the Local Government Official Inf Information and Meetings Act 1987, the Local Authorities Members Interest Act 1968, Sections 99, 105, 105A of the Crimes Act 1961, the Secret Commissions Act 1910, the Financial Markets Conduct Act 2013. Additionally, members have obligations under the following legislation which has been provided to you. That is the Health and Safety at Work Act 2015, the Local Government Act 2002, Public Records Act 2005, and Protected Disclosures Protection of Whistleblowers Act 2022, and the Privacy Act 2020. So, if everyone's happy with their understanding of that, I can move to recommendations. Do we have to second read those motions? Yeah, move and second. Okay. That we note. <laughs> okay. So the recommendation is that the Pākāwhareiki Community Board members of the 2022 to 2025 Trainium note the general explanation of legislation provided by the Chief Executive's representative pursuant to Section 1 of Schedule 7, Local Government Act 2002. Second move. Second move. Second move. Oh, did we move? I'll move. Move. Okay. <laughs> you got that? Thank you. Can you carry it? Oh, carry it. Oh, <laughs> shall we vote? Yes. So, everyone for say aye? Aye. 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 Against? Yes. Carry. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that moves us on to the election <coughs> of Community Board Chair and Deputy Chair for the 2022-2025 training. So the first thing um, that the community board will need to do is think about whether they want to vote using system A or system B as outlined in clause 25 of schedule 7 of the local government act. Do we have any preference? I thought that B was B? the most straightforward. Okay, so shall I propose that the Paikakariki community board adopt system B as outlined in clause 25 of schedule 7 of the local government act 2002? for the election of the board's chair and deputy chair for the 2022-2025 training. Do Seven. you want to move yeah. it? Move. Move that. Move that. Move that. Move that. Okay, so we vote. Yeah, we're all all in favour, say aye. Aye. Against? Three. Carried. <laughs> okay. So, um, do I ask for nominations? Does the board have any nominations for the position of Chair of the Pākehāwhāriki Community Board for this training? Uh, yeah, I would like to nominate one for the Chair. So, shall I recommend that? <laughs> Using System B. 
Sean McKinley is elected as chair of the Paikokariki Community Board for the 2022 to 2025 training. Have I got someone to move that? Normally when you oh, propose it, no. you move it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's good? <laughs> so good. Yeah, we've got to move her in a <laughs> second, yeah. <laughs> Everyone in favour say aye. Aye. Against? Carried. Okay. Um, is anyone prepared to nominate a deputy chair of the Punk Agree Community Board? I would like to nominate. Which would you like to nominate? I'd like to nominate Kelsey Lee. Okay, then I'll put through a recommendation that using system B, Kelsey Lee is elected as Deputy Chair of the Pipe Upgrade Community Board for the 2022-2025 training. Well, that's that been moved? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Second. So second. I'll second. I'll second. No, you go. No, you Okay, so we'll vote on that. All in favour say aye. Aye. Against? Carried. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, thank you um, all for coming. Um, it's really good to see uh, the, the turnout. Um, unfortunately, Carl has had to leave us, um, but we um, are really appreciative of Carl um, being here and the relationship that we will continue to forge um, with him. Um, we are acknowledging that we have a number of um, special guests. We have the mayor. We are very, very proud to have the mayor in attendance with Lady C. Janet. Uh, and we have uh, councillors and, and the deputy mayor, sorry, to you. Oh. We're learning. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and we have uh, councillors and uh, community board members uh, from the different community boards, so um, we really appreciate the support. Um, as you'll be um, aware, uh, the four of us, um, and we have Christian, um, who unfortunately has COVID in his last hold. Uh, it's, um, he's on Zoom, uh, but we're all new to uh, the roles here, so please um, bear with us as, as we uh, stumble our way <laughs> through this with the, um, the support of our colleagues from the council, which we're really appreciative of. Um, and it's good to see um, some regular attendees of, uh, of uh, community board uh, meetings here as well. Um, I'm always a fan of a, uh, yeah, a good meeting, a short meeting, so um, I won't take up too much of your time. Um, we have an agenda that we need to get through. Um, and so I would like to just call for uh, apologies. To do we have any apologies that have been noted? Apart from. Apart. Oh, uh, Council Mark Halliday. Mm -hmm. Council Mark Halliday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that we need, unfortunately, to register um, uh, Christian as an apology um, because he's not here in person. We can. Um, we, yeah. we, we need to find out <laughs> the rules <laughs> around that, but we'll do that just to um, play safe. Yeah. Are we aware of any other apologies? Unfortunately, Christian, um, because he's online, he can't do his declaration, um, what I understand, and so he will do that at his next mm -hmm. meeting. So um, he's um, here as an observer, um, and because he's unable to do his declaration in person and have that witness, um, he um, doesn't actually have a, a vote, my understanding is. But um, he's here in spirit, and as you might be aware, um, all four of us have met quite a bit. <laughs> Just, uh, work things out um, and uh, we are looking at um, uh, 
having like a, a mentoring role uh, as chair and, and deputy chair. Um, and then we tend to, at, at some point, swap that out um, and bring um, our, our colleagues um, on board. Because yeah, one thing that I don't necessarily want to continue um, to do, <laughs> um, and I'll be quite pleased um, yeah, uh, to hand that over at some point, but we will work um, reasonably well together, so I'm sure we'll get there anyway. Okay, um, my understanding is now we have declarations um, of interest related to uh, items on the agenda. Um, anybody have any declarations that they need to note at this time? With the declarations, how much, it, it's regarding items on the agenda, you don't need anything like in relation to our outside roles or anything? No, we do that through a different process of council. Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. So, no declarations of interest at this stage. No? Great. Moving on. Ah, uh, oh, the good part. Public speaking time. <laughs> um, we have B. Uh, Garrisi, we have Jan Nisbet, um, and if I mispronounce it for Friday, Great. Yeah, Paul Callister and Richard Young. So, um, the floor is yours, B. All right, I'll stand. It's probably easier. Uh, I'm Phil Tato. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me here in Kaikoukiki, which uh, for much of my life has been my home, so it's always great to come back here. Um, as you know, I'm you know the Raumati guy, um, chair of the Raumati Community Board. Um, but we share a couple of facts, a uh, person and a place, and I think I just want to acknowledge that publicly. First of all, obviously, our board council will share an um, unusual role. Uh, we'll try to make sure that all of the time is not spent on rally, so she's got time for you guys as well. I can't promise anything we'll see. Uh, but rest assured, we value her contribution on our board, and um, you know, we'll look after her, don't worry. Um, also, the place. Uh, we share, uh, obviously, Queen Elizabeth Park. Now, the boundary at the Funny Lower Stream is, I suppose, one of those kind of lines on a map. Um, I would like to uh, initiate a conversation with this board about how we, uh, how we view that asset, uh, if we can call it an asset. Uh, it's something that we probably have an informal kind of role. Uh, there's different ways that we can look at it, and I'll probably wish we don't have to have those conversations tonight at the other time. It's pretty useful to kind of acknowledge it publicly. I'd like to look at us in terms of uh, joint kaitiakia of the whole park, rather than kind of having lines and saying this is your bit and this is my bit. I'd rather that we can work in partnership and relationship and figure out what we can kind of do with that park together. There is a vibe issue, the um, grazers who have been kicked off there have received a letter today from regional council telling them if they don't sign a lease agreement by close of business tomorrow, the regional council will be removing their forces. Um, so there's suddenly an issue, and we have tried, I know that our end, we've tried to engage with the regional council about this issue. They haven't been particularly active, and it's suddenly at this crisis point. So my friend and colleague over here, Nigel Wilson, will hopefully give us some press on that issue. Um, but I just want to say this is something that I'm really keen to work with this board on together for the future, for the good of that, uh, that, that area. Hopefully we can establish a relationship with the Regional Council on it. Other than that, uh, please, the door is always open at any stage if there's anything you guys want to talk about. I'm certainly happy to come down here and talk to you. You're also welcome in Rowley, but congratulations on your positions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Congratulations to you folks and thank you very much for standing. It's, uh, yeah, it's, 
It's very important that we have a channel through which we can pass our concerns to um, council, etc. And I've got quite a long list of things to say. Um, well, I might just follow on. You'd be um, talking about Queen Elizabeth Park and the line in the sand with the stream, but I understand that Kaikakariki has supposedly lost Whareira, the real gem, because I understand, am I not right from the information here, that Whareira has gone to Ramadi, the boundary? Richard, do you tell me that? Yeah, no, I'm talking to B, and then I'm asking you the question, because wasn't it you talked? Well, I think the boundary of Beats was offered too far. Yeah, but I'm talking about the boundary for, like, the boundary for our one used to <coughs> include Footy Rock. Yeah, but now it's all changed, and Emerald Glen Road and things has gone attached because Ramati needed a few clients. Let's work on her in the way. Yeah, but what I'm just saying is it's a, it's yeah. a strange thing. I was up there today um, using some of the wonderful saws that we got funded from this board here because Fodi Roa used to be um, part of Kaikapariki. So I was feeling sad about the loss, but thank you for the saws. Uh, <laughs> right. Um, I was going to sh bring one down and show you what vicious big teeth they had, but I was probably would have been charged for carrying an offensive weapon. Um, <clears throat> so I'm here as just Citizen Jan. I'm also here as uh, a member of the Cycleway Walkway Brideway Committee, which I want you folks to know about. And um, that's a, an advisory group to council, and it's one of the ones that's functioned really well for the last 20 years, which I've been on it. Nothing to do with me. It's just had um, really wonderful staff, and, and it's shown how... If the users are showing the design of something, they can say, yes, this will work or it won't work. And our last big hassle, and this is in Ramadi's um, sphere, and I know Paul may be talking about it, but is the street furniture that they've put down Ramadi straits and signs saying all bikes have got to go over into Leinster Avenue. You know, it's just crazy stuff. But what I'm saying is the CWB works really well and works with council and we've had a really good success out here recently with um, getting some bike parking and I've seen just the explosion of bikes over my time of 20 years. So I'm saying bring any CWB issues to us. Um, also, I think it's time we had Darren Utting coming to talk with us. Darren was the liaison person and I've uh, worked with him a lot because we had to uh, cycle away, walk away, ride away, known as CWB. Um, went to a whole lot of meetings with them when they were designing the Kais to Pekka Pekka. And so we got some really good things for walkers, horse riders, some things for them, and, and bikers. But he's also involved with the track that's going up and over or coming from Battle Hill to here, because we're the destination. Um, <coughs> so that, and I want to know from him what is happening about making access through basically what was Perkins land to the World War II uh, petrol storage facility, which is a historic thing. I'd just like to see how many people have actually been to that. Put your hand up. So we've got about four or five people, and it's a really special structure. Uh, I don't know whether they took the lead lining out of it or that the Americans were so successful that they didn't get round to lead lining it, but it's hidden in, so the planes couldn't find it. It's, it's, it's a now. Yeah, but it's, it, it, we should be able to see it. Yeah. So we need to talk to him about that, and we need to talk to him about the thing over the hill. And I was asked to go in Holly's um, absence to a meeting with him and others about the signage that was going to put on, be put on <coughs> south of here and north of here to actually say to people, Kaikapariki is a destination. We have seen no signs. And for ages there's supposed to have been a sign for bikers saying the park is a safe alternative. 
We've still got road cones out there, which is the right of death on, on those cones. It's a real cock-up, basically. We finally did get some signs saying, go this way for if you're going to Wellington, and go this way if you happen to be a resident. But that, going through there as a cyclist, is a nightmare. The only, only good thing about it is you're supposed to go 50. Richard did some work on it, and we got a better setup, but it's still Mickey Mouse. So I'd like you to invite him to come and talk about a few of those things. And I think I might be just about my rat, but oh no, the other thing is I would like to see since Graham, our um, resident, wonderful caretaker of this village, left, things have got a bit sad and tatty. And I would really like to see what is the maintenance program for mowing, etc., etc. Because I think the streets need to be checked. There's so many times where I have to duck down or the prams get pushed out onto the road, etc., etc. I would be forever writing outside this number, etc., etc. I'm asking that it gets a tidy up and then maybe there's a once every six months, they have to go around every street and do the things that are presented right in front of them. <coughs> I would like to know more about how our place has looked after. It is looking sad and tatty. Thank you very much, and well done, you folks. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> I, I seriously thought that list was going to be a lot longer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Hey, it's Michael Gariki. We're about half an hour. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you so much. And yeah, I think that we're, um, we're all busy, frantically taking notes, so um, we will definitely be following up on that. Um, Brian Coe. Right. 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 I'm Brian Coe. Um, firstly, welcome to you all. And Bede, great to hear that you know there will be communications between the various community boards and. Personally, I'd like to see the connect with Fooker and Bay. I know they don't have a community board, but with whatever they have down there, because there's things like the roadway up here that needs a sort of joint kind of carry on, I think. Um, the brown signs, too. I have lots of conversations with our brown signs directing people along the coastal road, and you know, we even have people in the NZTA come up to the house and we'll show us maps and they tell us things, but yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, what else was I going to talk about? Yeah, the, the scrappiness, I'm just picking up on some of these other things. The scrappiness of the village is quite marked since Graham Carlson went to Scrap He used to check when there was a rainstorm coming, the gutters would all be cleaned, you know. The day after rubbish day, he'd pick up all the rubbish that was left lying around. And, um, the seats, when they needed painting, they got painted. I sent a message on Antenna about the seating along here, which has got stuff growing in it and paint and peeled off. And, uh, so hopefully you guys can follow up on all those little things. <coughs> yeah, to cut to the chase, for those who don't know me. I have been a member of the Parker Group who's seen all design groups since day one and before. And um, that was handed over to the community board some years ago. And we do not seem to be getting much progression. The, um, the tender closed on, for the one access way on the 21st of October. And um, we have been promised innumerable times, both at these community board meetings and to me by email from various people that the, um, the page on the KCDC website will be kept up to date, that we will get information, that we will be informed, that, that it's the way that they will communicate with the community, tell us what's going on, etc, etc. There's been nothing new on there since the 22nd of March. I've asked several times, I've been told that the comms people have been requested to put new information on there, 
just giving a brief update. We need to know that the contract has gone through, whether it's been accepted, whether it's been coming back again, where we're at, whether we're proceeding, whether we're not proceeding, what the money is. We just need more information. That is a huge thing for the community. It's huge for tourism, or it's huge for attracting people here, apart from just our protection. And I don't live along the parade. I have my privacy all day, Lizzy. But um, okay, thank you. And um, but this needs something needs doing, and we need information. We need to be kept in the loop, and um, that web page needs to be kept up to date. And not only the web page, because who would think to go and look at a web page and never gets anything put on it? You just wouldn't think to go there. So that needs to come onto your page or any of the PyCon pages so that it can be seen by everyone and anyone who you know, wants to do that. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of information on various sites. I can't remember the one that we had with that or remember. There was a site just set up for the Seawall, but there's a, there's a bit on the um, KCDC site, but there's a lot of historic things <coughs> and all that, and that, you know, I can dig that website out for you, but it's all a bit dated now because mm. nothing has happened for so long. So I would like you guys to pick that up and run with it, please. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Would be good, yeah, just to touch base with you about that um, old right. information on that website, and yeah, can we can yeah, see what we can pick up. And, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll it out. I'll it out. It'll be slow. And just to on that too, like obviously between now and then, gathering information from us up to date that we can collectively find. But also at the next community board meeting, say having some of the staff involved back down to give an update. councillors, both from Romati, Kapuriki and councillors, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, congratulations to you all. Good to see some friendly faces. Uh, Kapi Cycle Action, as Paul's pointed out, uh, the purpose of Kapi Cycle Action, we work within the Cycling Action Network, which is a national net network of cycle advocacy to promote things like integrated planning, benefits of cycling, reduce transport emissions, improve safety, encourage and creation of good cycling environments, develop cycle advocacy and cycle action. Um, been part of the group since 1997, providing national voice for everybody, people, for its commuting, recreation and touring. And obviously work with uh, councils, government, businesses, individuals, and with the cycleways, walkways and bridleways group within Carpenter. So, not much of a list, more of a sort of a, a heads up of things that would be great to do in the next three years. Um, safer roads through lower speed limits. Yes. You may or may not know that the difference between being hit by a vehicle at 50 and 40 is you are three times more likely to be killed if you're hit by a vehicle travelling at 50. Therefore, reducing speeds around schools and residential areas uh, down to at least 40 is obviously a high priority, not just for cyclists, but for the community. 
and obviously we support the reduction of speed limits throughout Pakapuriki and we hope the community board will, will take forward urgent proactive measures to support that change. In, in continuing the Romati Pakakariki, uh, oh by the way, it was, it was part of our room that stole Podi Rua from you. Um, it's, in, it's, yeah. it's, in, it's in that it's one. It's, it's in the Papa Ward. Oh, oh, there we go. Um, <laughs> the popular crossing is. Poplar Ave Crossing is obviously not in the Paikakarugi Ward, and therefore I know it was spoken about uh, by my colleagues in the Romani Community Board. Um, but the majority of people using it, especially during school time, are young people and people from Pakakariki. Um, we have been monitoring traffic there. We did it for four days. We've counted over 5,000 vehicles wow. going through at peak times. And something like 100 vehicles, uh, 100 vehicles over those each two days, or 50 vehicles a day, were crossing over that crossing at a speed exceeding 50 kilometres an hour. Um, 50 vehicles a day, going more than 10 miles an hour above the posted speed limit. Uh, the rest of the data is also very pretty graphs that I produced um, in front of you. Um, so obviously we will be very keen to see the Tonkin and Taylor recommendations for a, um, a dedicated cycle crossing and zebra crossing. Mm -hmm. There's a pretty little picture in the handout that I'm not sure what it is. Um, so we can do stuff with that. We would like to see that as a matter of priority. Look, it's not a, it's, it's a serious matter. Large number of vehicles which we've demonstrated, we can demonstrate again. Um, are exceeding the speed limit. It is not safe, especially for young people. Speeding in the village, um, in Pakakariki, obviously down the, the parade, uh, we'll, we would definitely support um, reduction speed limits through there and some sort of traffic calming, making it safer for uh, people not only cycling but also travelling through there. Queen Elizabeth Park, the, the gem between the two poles. <laughs> um, look, back in August, um, KCDC did give an undertaking that they would replace the two priority crossings that they removed, pedestrian priority crossings, that's still not been done. We would really like that to be done by Christmas when that park will be full of young people, full of adults, full of families um, using that. Bike parking in Pikakariki, as Jan's already said, there's some, been some work done already. There's a little picture there, a very, very cheap, very strong, very secure type of bike um, rack that could be installed very quickly and very rapidly. And if there's any support within the um, community board to see that happening as, as a trial, um, we would like to, to, to assist with that. Uh, similarly, yeah, the strategic placement of barriers actually has crime prevention and we're all aware of the railroads and stuff, so well-placed barriers can assist with security. And finally, the coastal pike path to the south. From mid-2023, there will be a fit-for-purpose shared path from north of Old Taki to Paikakariki village. So Paikakariki community board will be basically the only community board that will not have <coughs> a complete shared path through its yeah. Rohi. Yeah. Um, obviously you go south of here through to Pukarua Bay and down towards Wellington. As you may know, the current shared path behind State Highway 59 allows cycling along Pukarua Bay, but is substandard and unsafe. With the massive reduction in traffic on State Highway 59, there's now scope to transform this section into a safe and enticing shared coastal path that would enable more people to visit Paikakariki, both using walking and cycling. It obviously would recover, but would require um, work with Pike, with Poirier City Council and Rocky Katahi to come to the table, and perhaps that's a three-year objective. In the same time, we'd like to see that the trucks still using State Highway 59 be encouraged to use the road that was built from the great expense of the transmission gallery. There we go, if we do that in three years, we're doing great. <laughs> we're doing well, we're doing fantastically. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much.
Beach of Community Board and I said, who was that? And she Googled the photo and amongst some boring um, speech that was going on. And I had a bit of a, 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 a heartbeat, but he is married, so I, I you know, no, 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 no. <laughs> Anyway, look, it's, it's a delight to be here. And, and, and Te Horo and, and Paikok share a lot of similarities in its uniqueness and its small, kind of isolated uh, communities. And, and I, I congratulate you all. And, <laughs> yeah, just very briefly, I'll just expand on what Michael said. Congratulations to you all. And in terms of, I don't know if I've word elevate, I've used the word elevating, but certainly strengthening the role of the community board members and bringing those roles more into council. Um, just for the benefit of the rest of the room, I know all of you are probably aware of this, but there's now the opportunity for every community board member to sit on a council committee if, they, if, if, if that's the will of the board. So a community board chair will sit on council and then another representative on the major committee of the whole with um, the, both of those um, just um, around the table without voting rights, but there's two new committees Social, Social Sustainability Committee, which is going to have a new today name, as they all will, and then a Climate and Environment Committee, which also have representatives appointed from the community boards with full voting rights. So that can either be a community board member or somebody appointed by them. So I wanted to make that clear too to you, that that, that commitment to being within the council chambers is not an expectation, it's just an opportunity. So um, you can or, or, or not have um, a representative on those subcommittees or those committees, or if somebody else in the community you feel like they're going to make a good contribution and they're willing to take up that role, that's a possibility as well. But um, yeah, so the opportunity is there to be involved in the, at that more kind of central level and to bring Paikakareki issues into those committees. But um, of course, I respect that the commitment you've made is to here, is to Paikakareki, it's not to the council chambers. So all the best for the next three years. It's amazing what can be achieved by these community boards. It's just, it was such an incredible six years that I spent on the Paikakareki community board. And I'm acknowledging Jack, who was here before too, who used to be chair of the Paikakareki community board. And I'm um, just all the best to all of you. Thank you. I just wanted to acknowledge that, um, all the, the hard work because we um, we followed all the, the email trails and the backwards and forwards and the round and round circles. Um, but you know that you got there, um, and we we kind of like talked you know about um, a number of the issues that you know we kind of hold dear to ourselves that we would like to progress, um, and we really want to take up um, those positions because we think it's um, really important that. We're there representing Paikaka here around those tables, so we will definitely be um, here. Uh, so just wanted to acknowledge um, all your hard work and, um, and everything that went into that. So thank you so much. Um, so yeah, I just want to uh, impromptu you, Jan, see if you guys are all breakers. So I'm <laughs> Yeah, um, so uh, I just want to acknowledge, um, you know, being in Khan, being here from our um, uh, limited community board, and Mike, and his wife and I, um, and Janet and Lawrence, uh, great to see you guys here. Um, it's wonderful speakers tonight, it's fantastic to hear that. I feel very humble to be here in, uh, in this in the community, you guys are so tight down here. That's up here, up on the outside. <laughs> but um, no, I just wanted to congratulate you guys, and just let you know that we're all on the same page. Um, uh, I'm from uh, Mana Whenua, um, Nakahomi is one of my hapu. Uh, it's really good to see the country and the uh, country now, and it's great you guys have those relationships. So, yeah, congratulations and kill you guys. Um, <coughs> I guess I just want to thank this one for acknowledging Jane and all the hard work that you guys, uh, that you've done, you know, and uh, really good to see Richard and uh, Paul standing as well. Uh, when we talk about Pretty Law, um, I said the boundaries, you know, have been changed around. Um, you've got it. Yeah, I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> So I just just acknowledge you know the hard work and, and, and you know the beautiful things that you do and all we can do uh, and I, I'm sure I speak on behalf of um, you know the part of the community borders. I just support the work we do any way we can. 
um, and mm -hmm. just tying in with what Bede said, you know, so it was all about sharing and making it better for a whole, you know, for a whole, whole district overall. And just love the work you guys do. So, um, one of my suggestions might be is, is that Guy Burns is on the Parapara Indian Community Board. He's a very keen cyclist and he lives in Vaila South. I think it would be a really good hook up for you guys. Um, so, but we'll just talk a little bit further yeah. to that, yeah. But I would like to offer the community board, your community board, a we wander in. So I take you to the hot spots of Whaliroa because you can do, like, people don't even know what, what a treasure we've got yeah. on our hands. Oh, I'll take that back then. Yeah, I'll move. Um, a we wander. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I'll stop you for a full drive up to uh, South Valley. Yeah, <laughs> and that's going through. So we had to talk about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah so, <laughs> so Kia ora, you guys, is, uh, that's what collaboration does. Um, yeah, yeah. Kia ora, thank you so much. Myself that um, we can um, adopt that schedule, um, and I understand that if there are any changes made by council, that council will get in touch with me as chair first. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But they pretty much stick to yes. those dates. <coughs> yes. Um, my only question was um, what opportunity, you know, if, if for whatever reason we needed to change them, is yep. it the same process? Yep. We just come to you and advise you. Yes. Need to change, yes. but hopefully we will keep in sync with all the other community yep. boards and, and not do that. To you. A reason for a change could be, for example, that um, too many of you are unavailable, and then we don't have quorum to go ahead with the meeting. So we would discuss that with you and right. then find a new day and advertise that new. What sort of notice? Um, well, with changing it at short notice with a quorum, that. Um, I'll have to have a look what the standing orders say around notice period ahead of the time. But usually, sorry, from recollection, I think it's 14 days, but 14 days, please don't quote yeah. me on that. I will have a look into that cool. and get back to you. Excellent. Thank you so much. So, um, I don't think the um, I think I mean, the board adopts the schedule for meetings for 2023. They see that in appendix one of the report.
front of the seat in front of five hundred dollars to assist with the costs of full hire equipment refreshment and so on to the speakers. The local green fest um, that was held here in uh, in this hall on the thirteenth of um, November twenty twenty two. Um, I think that you see that as a, a really um, kind of valuable asset um, you know, for the community, especially for the Rangatahi uh, in the community and um, I think that we um, are in favour of that. So um, I would like for that the Kaikaku Community Board approved the grant of five hundred dollars to assist with the cost of full hire for the professions, publicity and speakers for the local Zen Fest which was held in Kaikaku on the thirteenth of November twenty twenty. I'll move that. Okay, so <laughs> uh, all those in favour? I can actually, it is at your discretion to give them more. Yeah. It is fully at the board's discretion to do yeah, that if we, you wanted we, to. We did realise that, but we wanted to um, you know, like work out in terms of um, sticking with the criteria and, and how we can manage that um, because we, we're conscious of what funding we have left okay. um, okay. in that um, community fund and what we have um, left with the Baka Manawa um, fund as well. And um, we're, we're really supportive, um, but we just want to, to, to do it and ensure that we you know, stick with our criteria because we've been setting precedents. Um, yeah. And in our first meeting, we just yeah, we want to stick with that. So we will be having the conversation and um, we will um, yeah, be clear with the further support. Okay, so um, the High Country Community Board <coughs> approved the grant of $500 to assist with cost of crafting and erecting to the that was placed alongside the new memorial wall in Queen Elizabeth Park. Right, someone? Yeah, Thank you, Kelsey. Thanks. Thank you. No, Thank you. There's a possible to make a comment from the floor, which is quite common in this, these community board meetings. Um, people here in the audience may not know, but that's the first time that the name Butch has appeared in that park, in the land that was taken from. Mm -hmm. um, so I just think it's a really significant thing, and that alone would be reason to, to put some put the fun yeah. in there because it's just so special. It is. And it special. breaks my heart that whole story. Mm. So and and we were really because um, for us as well, we wanted to um, you know kind of look into that and, and just be assured that. Um, that, that Carl had been involved and, and consulted because we, we recognise that it states in the application um, that um, it was only after that they um, understood the full history and, and what had occurred. Um, and then um, that's why the decision was made and they went with Carl um, um, and the Carters and the graphic designer to um, put that part in place. And we're totally supportive of that. 
um, but we're just finding our way in terms of assuring you know, for ourselves that we're following you know, the proper process around this. Oh, I appreciate yeah. that, but yeah. just yeah. it's a really, really a heart-bringing story. Mm, indeed, mm. yeah. And, and I know that we're in the middle of this, but um, this is one of the, the, the discussions that we've had um, that we want to work um, closely with Carl and others around how we um, you know, really work to um, support um, you know, uh, around Bunch House and, and everything that occurred there um, and that so we can um, see um, how, what we can do to support um, rectify uh, what happened there as well. But, um, yeah, why would we take up those positions around the council table? <laughs> okay, so we have... Um, Go <laughs> we have a movement and we have a second. Um, all those in favour? Uh, uh, Carol, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, moving on, we have um, matters under action and a review of matters under action. Is, we have a list. Is there any updates that, to that list that we well, I think there was only one from Paul B. Which is, I think, number one. Um, which is um, the Coastal Protection Upgrade, so Paikakariki Seawalk. So I believe at the last meeting the tender was open. Um, so the update is that the tenders for Access Way 4 have closed and council staff are currently working through the tender evaluation stage of the process. And two sections of the temporary repairs have been undertaken on the wall since the last update. Does that mean? Mm -hmm. I just yes. yes. And apart from that, eight and nine have been resolved. Yeah. So they've been resolved, haven't they? The steam. <laughs> <laughs> Item number eight: uh, cycle sign on Wellington Road. I understand that has been installed. Yep. And was it nine as well? Is no. That yeah, that's nine. still. That's oh, it's, it'll be resolved in the next. And item six, uh, Graham Taylor would like to come and speak to the meeting in February to the board. Great. Update. Yeah, on the way station. Oh, the way station. Yeah. yeah. And I think we're going to potentially have a term around the um, seawall part. Oh, um, right. He's, yeah, um, we, we've been in touch with him. We weren't sure how to we would have enough time to come this evening, mm. but um, we'll be interested to come in and hopefully have him here as well. Um, Did you have an update from Darren Atting as well, TG, on the transition meeting around transition to the To note, just to note, them, note them and right. do they have to vote on that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We need a mover and a seconder and a. Sorry. We need to move, move to note okay. it and oh, right. second okay. it and so, carry um, it. We would uh, like to um, note the uh, review of the matters uh, under action and the updates that we've received. Sure. Thank you, Kelsey. Second. And thank you, Sylvia. All those in favour. And if I'm not mistaken, um, there's no final confirmation of the scope of minutes. And that brings us to the end yeah. of our thing. Well done. Um, thank, thank you so much. We got here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank
we did not have we do you have um, some uh, coffee, tea, and um, requested sultana pasties, like all, um, and others. Um, so can I ask? Um, Remembering to move and see, and 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 remembering to move and see, and